I said before, three phase power gets created on the generators. I got three generators over here that presented in orange. And power, it goes through uh, three conductors represented by one line. Power from the generator enters the switchboard via the generator breaker. A breaker, if you will, is just a big switch that allows us to connect three different wires at the same time when they close together. Three wires because we got three phases of power going into the switchboard. Power gets distributed from that center section of the switchboard to the other two sections. In this one we got 2SB, 2SA, and 2S, which is where power comes from the generator. Then, once it's in the A section, in this case, power it gets farther, sent to another breaker to a, what is called a low center. There are some larger loads, like fire pumps, for example, that they have smaller breakers that feed directly the fire pump from the switchboard. This over here, I got a bus tie breaker because this line, it represents a bus tie, and a bus tie is a set of wires or conductors that connect two switchboards. So this bus tie is, is called 2S, 3S, because it connects number two switchboard to number three switchboard. If these two bus tie breakers are closed, it will allow us to have power, or rather to power number three switchboard all the way from number two switchboard like you see. Low centers have a lot of small breakers or medium sized breakers that they feed independent loads, power panels, and equipment. Here, we also have a bus tie and another bus tie over here. And they can be, if all of them are closed, that's what is called a closed bell loop. And that is done whenever you have two generators, let's say one and two on, number three will be off, and this breaker will be open. But one and two can run in parallel. And what it means is that these ones, as long as everything is closed with this one open, you will be able to power the entire ship from those two generators. So electrons that would be going through some load that is connected to this one, some of them will be coming from number two generator and some of those electrons could be coming from number one generator. In that scenario, we could also split the bus, remember this one is open, and we could open this generator break, uh, this bus tie breaker over here. So now number two generator will only be feeding number two switchboard loads and number one generator will be feeding one switchboard and, because this will still be closed, it will be feeding number three switchboard. Generator breakers and bus tie breakers, they tend to be pretty large. And this is kind of like what they look like. I will show you later on how mine or the one in my ship looks like. Now, loads from fire pumps, they are smaller breakers. This is what I call a medium-sized breaker. I happen to have a very new medium sized breaker, is what I call over here, and that is the switch uh, per se. And in the back of it, well, here I got uh, this is where usually power comes in, and this is where it goes to the load uh, once the breaker closed. Now, don't confuse them with household breakers. Household breakers are only for one phase, but shipboard breakers, the majority of them is going to be three phases. have the ability to trip on their overcurrent conditions. And some breakers, obviously not this one, at the bottom of it, you can install what is called fuses. This is a breaker fuse. And they just are farther in there to provide more protection to the load. To learn all about all the different type of breakers that the Navy uses, I recommend reading chapter two of the Electrician's Mate book. 
So how power gets to small loads from the generator usually trickles down this way. Via the generator breaker, which is a breaker as big as this bo uh, whiteboard, once it closed, it gives three-phase power through a main bus bar and from the switchboard, as I told you before, there might be large loads like fire pumps and some other large equipment that has breakers come off straight from the switchboard. But the bigger breakers actually go to feed low centers and other switchboards. The low center has smaller breakers per se and some of them they go straight to some loads and the other ones they go to feed what is called power panels. A power panel is just a big breaker box that some of them they like this power panel it gives power to a pump and oven a fan and a few other things right off of it. Now this power panel over here it gives power to what is called a fuse box. So the S's over here represent set of fuses. That's, that's, a, that's a total of six set of fuses over here. And if you will, they will just send power to different smaller loads. Then in case load number one shorts out because it's a fault into the wire, so one not, it's meant for these fuses to trip first before this breaker opens. That is called selective tripping. Selective tripping is that the closest short circuit protection device closest to the load is the one that's going to trip before anything else in the system. Obviously, this breaker in here is going to isolate a fault that was to happen at the low center level. So here I got some wires that are coming in from the actual generator and there is where it's entering the switchboard so here is the same view and it's actually going into well if you see that over there that's the switch now the breakers that come from the uh, generator are pretty large there are some other breakers which this one is the same type that we got over there and they are, they are going to what is called the low centers or in this case it's going to another switchboard now switchboard themselves they have little breakers and I call this little because in comparison to those they are little these ones they feed individual pumps like this one over here it's a fire pump a fire pump is a very large motor so it's low is being fed instead of a power panel it gets fed directly from a switchboard in this case this is what a low center looks like it looks like a switchboard but obviously it's not a switchboard it's just a low center it's smaller it feeds smaller loads you see these breakers are not as big as the ones that we saw on the actual uh, switchboard some of these loads are equipment itself and some of them are just power panels. I will show you what a power panel looks like. Those centers typically they feed power panels. Here's a power panel. The loads on the power panel are much smaller. Now, some of these loads are equipment itself, like this one happens to be a microwave. But this breaker in particular, it fits what is called a distribution panel which means it's a smaller power panel like this little guy so power has been cascading all the way from the switchboard to the low center to the big power panel to this little power panel other times they just fit distribution boxes a distribution box is just a fancy name for a fuse box Let's look how the fuse box is wired inside. Now, when talking about fuse boxes, power always comes to the one side or the other side. Power is in the center. This over here is a metal rod that is behind uh, the fuse box and it covers power sideways. And if I were to sample between here and here, it's 440, because it's the same thing as that. And now, notice that there are other metal rods that they are insulated from the, from the back ones 
that they go up and down, and they actually attach to these S's, which these are the fuses. This is the bottom fuses, this is the top fuse, and this is what is the fuse clip, you know, the thing that grabs the fuse. Now, so if I were to put a multimeter between this point and this point, I'm gonna get a total 440 volts or full potential because this is still the loads, I mean, the, uh, the, the incoming power. This is going to the load. So this could be a microwave, this could be a freezer, this could be a TV and so on and so forth. So with that in mind, if I grab a multimeter, and let's say I check, when I've checked these fuses over here, if I check at the bottom, and if both, all three fuses are good, here I'll get 440, 440, and 440. Now, mind you that some of those fuse boxes are actually 110 volts, so you're gonna get in here, depending on what you get over here. Now, what happens if a fuse is blown? That means that whenever you get this, you're, gonna, you're not gonna get the whole 440. You're gonna get some other, it could be 220, it could be zero, but bottom line is that you're not getting 440. So that is a good indication that you gotta say one of the two fuses will be bad. You wouldn't be able to tell which ones until you go out there and do this, uh, do top to bottom. Now, top to bottom is the same thing as I told you before, the difference of potential of the same piece of wire is zero volts. So this over here is connected to that. Is this is the same piece of wire, so the difference of potential on this same wire is zero volts. A fuse is just a piece of wire. So, across it, a good fuse, it should be zero volts. This one, since it's open, you will get some random voltage. It could be as high as, you know, 10 volts or 20 volts or 150 or 200. Anyway, it's not zero. So, therefore, that would be a bad fuse. Now, when checking fuses, the best way to check fuses is actually to cut off power. And you got to make sure you cut off power and you put your multimeter in, in ohms. Do not check ohms with power on because you will damage your multimeter. And what you do is you do the top and the bottom. So, with the multimeter and resistance, checking a fuse, since it's a piece of wire, the resistance got to be less than one ohm. If you see over there, it's two ohms. So, without having to pop the fuses out, with the fuses in place, you can go and check, and you should get zero ohms, zero ohms, zero ohms, and this one, you're gonna get some, something other than zero. That means that fuse is bad, and that's when you do a resistance check. So here we have a typical fuse box. Remember that I said that power comes in, and you can see that there are three wires coming over here. That's what we need power to here. Look at that, 440. 440. So the Power comes in and now it's in the center. So when you were check fuses, never check the center because, well, that's where the incoming power is. You want to check it out, it's in the outside. So let's check these two fuses. Look, the top, 440. That means this fuse and this fuse are good. Now, check it again. Now this other two, I don't get 440. That means one of these two fuses is bad. Well, we already know this one is good, so it defaults that one. Now let's do top to bottom while we wait for the good fuse. The top to bottom, it is 0.8 volts for the, for the second fuse. How about the first fuse? 0.8 volts. 0 0.008 should I say. So that's what I call a perfect zero. Now, how about this one over here, the bar fuse? It's not zero. So therefore, this is the bar fuse right now. 